Greetings, fellow mathematicians. This is the little corner of the internet we call Marshable Math. My name is Mr. Marsh. Today's lesson is going to be on factoring quadratic trinomials with a leading coefficient other than one. So get yourself a piece of paper and a pencil and a calculator perhaps handy. Be ready to do some work. And you're in charge of the time. So if you want to press pause, rewind, or even fast forward, it's up to you. Let's do a little bit of review first. What is a quadratic? A quadratic is a polynomial whose um, highest exponent on the variable, in this case x, is 2. We call that the degree. So it's, it's a degree of 2. And uh, this here is, a, is an example of a quadratic. Standard form requires us to put it in descending degree. So it's going to be exponent of 2. This is x to the first, even though we don't write that exponent there. And this last one has no x, or you could think of it as x to the 0 with power. Oftentimes we have a standard form written like this, just as a general um, little reminder here. ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are just the coefficients then that we have in the actual quadratic. So in this case, we can say that a is positive 2, b is positive 7, and c is negative 9. Okay? Now, a factor is something that is multiplied. Okay? Or it is something, you could think of it like this, something that will divide another number evenly without any leftovers. You know, no fractions, no decimals. Okay? Two factor means the process we go through by which we take a product, something that's already been multiplied, and we find the prime factors. What can we break it down to so that it is expressed as a multiplication problem? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see if we can't find the prime factors of this quadratic. Now, the one here with the two in front, that oftentimes presents a particular difficulty with students. These are often very challenging, and um, oftentimes students really regret having to do these kinds of problems. But I think I can show you a method that you can easily, thoughtfully, and intelligently then factor this without much trouble at all. So call this method the AC method because it's going to involve the first number and the last number here. It's also called splitting the middle term. Middle term. And you'll see why here in a second. So I'm going to jump right into it. The way that I would factor this is, after getting it in standard form, I would take the a value times the c value. So in this case, 2 times 9. Ignore the negative sign here for a moment. Just take the number times the number. So 2 times 9 would be 18. Okay. Now I need to make for myself a little list of all the factors of 18. Start off with 1 and 18. Next, 2. And we want to do this systematically so we don't miss any. 2, yes, that would be 9. 3 and 6. 4 doesn't work. 5 doesn't work. And 6, we've already got over here on the right-hand side. So once you find a duplicate on the right-hand side of something that you're looking for on the left, you know that you're finished. Okay, now I've got my list of factors. Here's what we need to think. Okay, which of these factors, when I do this operation on them, so in this case I'm going to be subtracting them because this is a minus sign, which of these pairs of factors, when I subtract the numbers, gives me the number here that's B? Don't worry about the sign, just take a look at the number. So the question is, which of these pairs of factors, when I subtract them, give me 7? Which ones? The 2 and the 9. Okay. So these are the ones that I'm going to use now to factor. Now, it's called splitting the middle term because that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take the 7x and I'm going to break it into two parts. Okay. I'm going to keep the 2x squared as it is, 2x squared. The negative 9 stays there as well, negative 9. But what I do now is I take this 7x and I break it into a piece of a 2 and a 9. So what I've got now is a 2x and I've got a 9x. Now I need to think about signs, S-I-G-N, a sign. How do I get a positive 7 from a 2 and a 9? Well, don't I have to have a positive 9 and a negative 2? Right, you see that? So that when I work, if I were to work backwards, if I combine these together, negative 2x plus 9, I get a positive 7. Okay? Now what I've done is I've taken this middle term right here and I've broken it into these two different parts. Now we're going to use factor by grouping. So if you need to review factor by grouping, please take a moment and do that. But we're going to take the group now on the left 
and we're going to take the group on the right, and I usually do a little dashed line just down the middle to separate them out. Don't put parentheses here because then you're changing it into a multiplication problem. But I'm going to look at this group now and think, well, what's the greatest common factor of these two? And I'm going to ignore the right side. Greatest common factor of 2x squared minus 2x. Well, 2 and an x. So I take out a 2x, and that leaves me an x, what, minus 1? Like that? You with it so far? Okay. In order for this to work, what I have to get when I do the same thing over here on this side also must be an x minus 1. So I go ahead and write it over here in the hopes that it will work itself out. It helps me think about the problem a little better. So now, just looking at the right two, this group, um, what can I factor out of 9x minus 9 that will leave me an x minus 1? The 9 is very simple to come out here. Factor out the 9. Now we have to be thoughtful about this. It's got to be a plus. Usually if it's a negative, if you factor a negative out, your habit is good to put the negative there because you're used to doing that sort of thing. But when we just factor out a positive, we usually don't put a plus sign there, but we have to in this case because this row right here has to be equivalent to that row right there, and this plus sign is going to come in very handy. Okay, now what I've got is I've got now two groups, this piece and that piece. So I got the red and I got the green. Now, they share a common factor. The factor that they share, then, is going to be this group of x minus 1. Do you see how that's common between them? Even though it's a binomial, it's still a common factor of this group and that group. It's in both groups. So here's the beauty of it. I factor out the x minus 1. I bring that out. That becomes my one factor here, x minus 1. And now look at what I've got remaining. I've got a 2x and I've got a plus 9. That's my other binomial, 2x plus 9. There we go. Now, one of the ways that we can check these is simply to multiply them out. So let's do this. Let's come over here to the left. Let's do x minus 1 times 2x plus 9. Now let's just check it. I'm just going to foil these things, OK? x times 2x, 2x squared. x times positive 9 is plus 9x. Um, negative 1 times 2x is going to be minus 2x, and then negative 1 plus 9 is going to be minus 9, and then if I combine this middle here, I'm going to get 2x squared, um, positive 9x minus 2x, that would be a plus 7x, and then minus 9 in the end. Is that what I had originally? You bet. Okay. And the question I like to think about now is why does this system work? Well, all you're doing, if you can multiply this out, do you see that we get these two middle terms here that then combine into 7x? And all we're doing when we factor is we're just going backwards, right? We're taking this end product and we're saying, hmm, what middle terms would I get if I were to take it and split it into these things right here? We're just going backwards. So it's a positive 9x and a negative 2x. So negative 2x and a positive 9x. There we go. And so it's just working the process backwards. Okay. Think you got it? Let me give you another one to try. So we'll remove that. Erase this. Let's try the next one. Let's go with 5x squared minus 11x plus 2. So follow the same pattern here. Press pause for a moment on the video and try your hand at factoring that by using the AC method. Okay, let's jump back in, see how you would do. Okay, is it in standard form? Yes, it's already in descending degree of x. So I'm going to take then the a times the c, which is going to be 10. And I'm, again, I'm not interested in the signs at this point. I use the signs to do some other things. So 5 times 2, 10. Factors of 10, very, very simple. 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Okay. Which ones when I, and here's the thoughtful part, which ones when I do this? What's that? It's a plus sign. So which ones when I add them give me the number 11? 1 and 10. 
Okay, so now I'm going to take this negative 11 and break it into two pieces. I'm going to break it into a piece of a 1x and also a piece of a 10x. So I'm going to recopy down 5x squared, 5x squared, and I'm going to have a 1x, even though I don't write the 1, right? That would be a newbie mistake. We don't do that. 1x and then a 10x and then a plus 2. And now I have to think about the signs. How do I get a negative 11 from a 1 and a 10? Do you see that both of these signs would have to be negative in order for this to work? A negative x and a negative 10, because when I combine them together, negative 1 minus 10, negative 11. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I've got my four terms. Now I'm going to factor by grouping. I split it down the middle. I take the greatest common factor of this group, which looks to me just like it's an x, leaving me a 5x minus Zero? No, we know that it's not a 5x minus zero because then it would just be 5x. And if I multiply it in, I just get the 5x squared and I don't get the negative x. We have to have a placeholder here. If you factor everything out of a term, you still have to hold that position, 5x minus one. And if it's gonna work, I've gotta get the same thing over here, 5x minus one. And then I think, what do I factor out of this to give me a 5x minus one? Well, I know that if I factor um, a 2 out of 10, I get 5. So it's a 2 here. But I have a problem now with the signs. Because 2 times 5x is not a negative 10x. And 2 times a negative 1 is not a negative 2 as it should be. But do you see if I then put a negative right here, that it will then equal the top line, right? If you distribute this back in, multiply it. Negative 2 times 5x, negative 10x. Negative 2 times negative 1 positive 2, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive. Why? So in any case now, I've got my two different common uh, terms from these left group and the right group. So I grab these and pull it out front and it becomes a 5x minus 1. And then what I've got left is an x minus 2, x minus 2. There you go. Okay. How'd you do? Good? I bet maybe some of you have got these in a different order, perhaps. Do you have these in a different order? Some people like sweat about that and think, oh my goodness, I've got to make sure I put them in the right order. There's a beauty in this method in that it doesn't matter which order you put these middle terms in. I could just as easily have written it as 5x squared minus 10x minus x plus 2. And maybe you notice that over here on the left, when I did this problem here, and remember we had the original one there? On my original one, I had a negative two plus nine, but over here it was a plus nine minus two. So it doesn't matter which way that you do it. Just for giggles, if you want to, go ahead and split this down the middle and factor that out. I guarantee you get the same thing. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do, 3x squared um, minus 16x minus 8. Okay, so press pause in the video, take your hand at that, see what you get. How'd you do? Okay, let's give it a shot. 3 times 8. Yeah, 24. Factors of 24. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, 5 doesn't work. 6 we've already got, so we're done. So which pairs of these factors, when you subtract them, because we're dealing with the sign of C, subtract them, give you the number 16? None of them. Okay. So what happens then if you find one that will not work according to the system? Nice and simple, it's prime. Cannot be factored down. Oh man, I remember being in high school algebra two class and uh, Mr. Lincoln was my teacher. Mr. Lincoln was a good man, but um, I wasn't taught this method back then. I was taught just to guess and check. And so I had to like make a list of all the different possibilities that it could be between the, the three and the eight and what are the factors of three and what are the factors of eight and make a big list and all that stuff. And, and I remember it just gives me a stomach ache trying to factor these things. And uh, I remember coming into class one day and there was one that I just couldn't get 
like I erased a hole in my paper because I just messed up so many times and it was just like, oh, I was mad. And then I ripped a hole in my paper and that just made it worse. I'm like, got a hole in my paper and Mr. Lincoln's asking questions about, you know, the homework the night before and who's got a problem with this and, you know, somebody said, well, it's that lock. Oh, good. That's the one I want the answer to. Oh, that's prime. That can't be factored. Ah! Wouldn't it be nice to have a method that actually works? Yeah. It's not just guess and check. And I don't know why um, most math books don't have this method in here. It's a very nice, very simple, very thoughtful method because all you're doing is you're just working the multiplication backwards. In fact, let me see if I can show you an example here of a textbook that I actually like. This is an Algebra 2 textbook I've thought out of before. Let's see if I can get the video in here and get it to focus. Dun, 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 dun. Focus camera? I don't know that it's going to focus. There we go. Example number two, there it is. Notice they're putting together like all the different possibilities that the first and last terms could be. And then if you come over here to the top of the page, right, it's showing you there, hey, let's try all those possibilities. There are six possible factorizations to check. Notice you gotta do one, two, three, four, five before you actually get one that works. Isn't that so lovely? I think it's lousy. Just for fun and for the sheer power and dominion over the mathematics that I like that this gives me, I'm gonna do it, the AC method. Try it along with me, here we go. 15T squared, it uses T for the variable. 15T squared minus 16T plus four. Factor that by guess and check. Or if you like, factor it by the AC method. Okay, press pause. If you want, I'm jumping in. 15 times four. Oh, is there a greatest common factor here? I gotta check that first. No, there's none. Okay, so 15 times four, that's 60. Factors of 60, oh, let's see, one and 60, two and 30, three and 20, four and 15. Now, wait a second here. I, I need to think which ones when I add them give me 16. So maybe I should just stop when I get to ones that do what I want it to do. So, nope, it's gonna be then five, Oh my goodness, I don't remember. Five, oh, five and 12, yeah, okay. Six and 10, oh, add together to give me 16. Six and 10, there we go. All right, so split the middle term out. 15 T squared, doesn't matter if you do six or 10 first. How do I get a negative 16 from six and 10? It would be negative six T um, minus 10 T plus four. Split it down the middle, okay. Greatest common factor between 15 and 6 would be what, 3? I'm making both give up a t. Take out a t, leaving me a 5t minus 2. Yeah, is that right? Okay. If it's going to work, it's going to be a 5t minus 2. Does it work over here? What do I factor out of a negative 10t to give me a positive 5t? Well, the sign, obviously, so negative 2. And then if I do a negative two times a negative two, do I get a positive four? I do, woohoo! That kind of rhymed, actually. So then I'm gonna pull this out. It becomes five t minus two times three t minus two, and I think I'm done. How long did that take? Not long at all, okay? So, guess and check, nope, no more. Do the AC method, or splitting the middle term. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right if I didn't thank the person that actually showed me this a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That would be Don Nichols, who is a teacher at my high school when I was a student, and then I later taught with him. And I remember him coming to the door of the room one day, and I was doing all kinds of gyrations, and it worked, but it was long and tedious, and he was kind of watched me through the door, and he was like, hey, why don't you use the AC method? And I said, watch that. And he said, come here, I'll show you. So you are now, I guess, uh, Don Nichols' mathematical grandchildren because he taught me and now I'm teaching you. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.